Smile upon you is our prayers. Welcome to the virtual in service, person service of the Lebanese Baptist Church, 6300 Hartford Avenue here in the city of Detroit, Michigan. We are praising and blessing God for his grace, his mercy, his love, and his kindness. Another day, another opportunity, another chance and privilege to come together to lift, to glorify, and to magnify our Savior. I'm telling you, it's powerful to do it in person, to do it virtually, and to do it connected to the phone conference call line. The Lord brings us together from far and near that we might celebrate the awesomeness of our Savior. You can say what you want to say, but the Lord's been good to us. He has blessed us. He has kept us. He has sustained us. Matter of fact, let me put it like this here. It's Valentine's weekend, and God has poured his love on us and the love of God that sustains us through every life situation. Therefore, we come to lift him to glorify him and to magnify our Savior. Welcome to the New Ebenezer Baptist Church Detroit. Put your hands together as we enter into worship. Welcome to New You are in an atmosphere that is filled with love and the Spirit of God. So just let Jesus in. So just let Jesus in. One more time, welcome to New World. You are in. That is filled with love. And his spirit. So just let Jesus in. So just let Jesus in. Welcome. Welcome to New World. We welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord in this place.
that unless we really don't need to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> scripture reading will be coming from the 23rd number of Psalm, and it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thus I read the 23rd number of song in its entirety. May God rest to the reader, the hearer, most of all the doer of his most holy and everlasting word. Shall we pray? My Father God, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, Father, where shall I go? Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. It was your amazing grace that brought us safe thus far, and it will be that same grace that will lead us on. This morning, our Heavenly Father, I come before you to give you some thanks. Thank you, Father God, for the many blessings that you have stowed upon me. Thank you, Father God, for my lying down last night, my rising this morning to see the dawning of a new day. Father God, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Father God, I'm thanking you, Father. When I rode this morning, I was clothed and in my right mind. Father God, while I'm in the right mind, help me keep my mind stayed on thee. Father God, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Father God, thank you for bread on the table, Father God. Clothes on our back. Father God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father God, because you brought us, you taught us, you kept us, and you never, never left us. For that, Father God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. Father God, you said if we need you, all we have to do is call. So I'm calling on you this morning, Father God. Father God, to say, look and have mercy. Have mercy on us, Father God. Father God, have mercy on the man that you have planted over here. Father God, you speak to him and through him that he may lead us in the way that you would have us to go. And Father God, help us to follow him as he follow you. Father God, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Father God, ask you to have mercy on, uh, look and bless the Ramsey family, Father God, the Kirkland family, Father God. Father God, let them know that you are too wise to make a mistake and too holy to err. Father God, not all of them, but every family that need you, that's standing in need of your blessing, Father God. And Father God, it means all of us, because all of us stand in the need of your blessing. So Father God, you should bless us. Bless us, Father God. Father God, if you bless us, we will be blessed. Keep us, Father God, we shall be kept. Father God, these and all other blessings in your Son Jesus' name, and for his sake, amen, and thank God. Today we are praying for those convalescing at home and those in rehabilitation centers. We are praying a special prayer for Sister Mamie Owens, Brother Dennis Lay, Brother Horace Kegler, Sister Pearl Cotton, Brother O.C. Gators, Sister Jacqueline Raglan, Sister Naomi Brill, 
Sister Jamika Sims, Sister Laquanda Reed, the Frazier family, Sister Kathleen Reed, Reverend Leonard Jones, Brother Rufus Brown, Sister Gina Joseph, Brother Robert Slappy, Sister Darlene Townsend, Brother Christopher Brill, Sister Odessa Pierce, Sister Michelle Blackshear, the Allen family, Sister Yvonne Price, Brother Jim Rhodes, Sister Judy Jenkins, Brother Ernest Gosh, Sister Janie Ramsey, Sister Minnie Kelly, Minister Ray Vaughn, Aubrey Leonard, the Ewing family, Sister Shante Mulkey, Sister Patricia Finley and family, Sister Patricia Satterfield and family, Sister Delvine Mulkey Rose. The Kirkland family, in the passing of our own Mother Earlene Kirkland, the Ramsey family, in the passing of Brother David Ramsey, the Edie family, in the passing of Sister Dorothy Edie, the Minor family, in the passing of Reverend Freddie Minor, praying for Sister Elise Pearson and family in the passing of her nephew, Sister Sherry Jordan in the passing of her son, Byron Fambro, the Giles family in the passing of Sister Renee Giles, the Garrett family in the passing of Sister Linda Garrett, Sister Lois Miller in the passing of her uncle, Arlie Cooper. And we're praying for all of you. Amen. I have an announcement here. Uh, next Sunday, the New Ebenezer Health Ministry presents Wear Red Sunday. So we're asking that everyone please wear something red to help us support fighting heart disease. Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States of African American women. And just a couple of facts here for you. Uh, next week we will share more information, we will have resources, but as with men, women's most common heart attack symptom is chest pain or discomfort, but women are more likely than men to experience some other common symptoms, particularly shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, and back or jaw pain. So th those are some things for you to look out for. And on the black history part of the medical, just want to give you two facts. Otis Boykin was an inventor and engineer who is best known for improving the pacemaker by creating a device that controlled it with more accuracy. And you know the pacemaker is that small electrical device that's placed in a person's chest to help them maintain a regular heartbeat. And from Michigan, Dr. Alexa Irene Canada was the first black neurosurgeon working on the brain, spine, and nerves. She focused on children's neurosurgery and became chief of neurosurgery at our own children's hospital here in Michigan. So thank you very much, and we hope that you support us after the worship service next Sunday.
Come on, you ought to worship him like you're healed. Don't die now. You ought to worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. God, our Father, we praise and bless you now. Thank you for your grace and mercy, your love and your kindness. Thank you for another day of allowing us to come together to lift, to glorify, and to magnify your name. Thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding and a love that overflows in all of our lives, regardless to where we are or what the situations might be. It's preaching time again. So pour in. Allow us to pour out that when we leave this place, we leave here the better. Not because of us, but because of your word. Therefore, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The saint says amen and bless God. Come on, saints of 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 God. We worship him. We magnify him. We praise him. And we bless his name. For the Lord is good. I say the Lord is good. The Lord is good and he's worthy of our praises. How good the Lord is. Listen, you might have your seats. We are praising and blessing God again for chance, opportunity, and privilege to come together again to lift, to glorify, and to magnify the name of our Christ. The Lord is good. I ought to have three witnesses real quick. The Lord is good. And the Lord that we serve is certainly worthy of all of our praises. We praise and bless him again for allowing us the opportunity to make our way to the house of prayer that we might be able to lift, to glorify, to praise, uh, and to magnify his name. He is an awesome God. I'll say it again. He is an awesome God. And he is a God that is worthy of all of our praises. It's the love weekend. <clears throat> Y'all so quiet. Let me say it again. It's love weekend. It's the weekend where we shower, where we shower each other and share the love that we have with each other. But it gives us an opportunity to share the love of Christ with everybody. It gives us a chance to share the love of Christ with everybody. And I keep trying to get us to see it. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't get it. What we fail to realize is that the love of the Lord is so rich. It is so real. And it plays such a major role in all of our lives. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. I need y'all to just lift your hands and throw back your head and tell the Lord, thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for loving me. How good the Lord is. How good he is. Listen, beloved, we certainly pray for all of those who desires our prayers. We keep them lifted and we keep them covered in our prayers on today. So many names that were shared with us on our prayer list. So many families that are going through, but we keep them lifted. We keep them covered in our prayers that God will grant them the peace, the comfort, and the healing uh, that the Lord is certainly able to do. Thank you all again for sharing with us in the services for our beloved sister, Sister Renee Giles uh, on Friday. Thank you all for being here and sharing uh, with that family in that service. Again, I request your prayers as we prepare to celebrate the life of our own beloved mother, Mother Earlene Kirkland, uh, on this coming Wednesday at 11 o'clock a.m. here in the sanctuary of our church. Viewing will take place on Tuesday from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, at the James H. Cole Home for Funeral Home, uh, Home for Funerals on the, on the uh, Boulevard Chapel, at the Boulevard Chapel, I should say, Viewing is going to take place there. Those who cannot be with us uh, on Wednesday, I do ask that you go by and express your sentiments and love uh, to the family, Mother Kirkland, faithful member of our church. Amen. Faithful member uh, of our church. And so I've asked that you all would go and certainly share with them. And then I'm asking your prayers for Deacon Orlando, Orlando Ramsey uh, and family uh, in the passing uh, of his father, him, and Valerie and Dave, that we're praying for them. Services shall take place 
uh, here in the sanctuary of our church on Friday morning uh, at 11 o'clock a.m. Viewing is going to take place from 4 o'clock until 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, at the Wilson Aikens Funeral Home, the East Side Chapel, the Owens Chapel, uh, on Thursday evening uh, from 4 until 8. Services shall take place Friday morning, 11 o'clock a.m. here in the sanctuary of our church. Again, I'm asking all of us, those who can and will, to be present, our ushers, our nurses, uh, those individuals uh, who help us to maintain uh, that control and mood during the services, that you all will share with us in both services, both services uh, on Wednesday and also share with us again uh, on Friday. Let's talk about it. The root of all, the root of it all, part two, so Ladon Moore presents, you know, the let's talk about it, the root of it all, part two, uh, February the 26th, 2022 at the Disciples of Christ Church, 13501 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48227 from 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, until 12 noon. A light breakfast is going to be served. Uh, three groups, men, women, and youth. Uh, you're invited to come by and share with them in person. And then there is a conference call line number. We'll post this so that you all can have it. I talked about this a little bit on the other day that when we pause and look at life and what's going on and the mental challenges that so many individuals are facing. It makes no difference what your state is in life or how well off you are or what your color is or where you come from. Mental illness has a way, beloved of God, of becoming a part of our lives. I told you all the other day that these things are connected. Fear and anxiety and the hand of Satan. Amen, somebody. And the hand of Satan is a part of this all. And we find ourselves as individuals holding stuff in, keeping it to ourselves, and don't address it. You got to talk about some things. Amen, somebody. You got to talk about some things. You got to share some things in life with other individuals. You got to get that help that you need, that conversation, that prayer. Amen. That conversation, that prayer, and that connection. Uh, with individuals that you might be able to move through life uh, and move through living. And so I encourage you all again to be a part uh, of this great season, of uh, this great time of being able to come together uh, and to be a blessing to each other. Somebody say amen on today. Listen, I'm thanking the Lord for another year of life and living. Amen. I am blessing God for another year of life, another year of living. Thank you all for your calls, your text messages, your cards, your gifts, whatever you all has done. I certainly appreciate it. I thank the Lord uh, for it. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, what are you doing? I said, trying to live my best life in the season such as this, knowing that the hand of God is upon my life. Amen. You got to know these things. You got to know that the hand of God is. Uh, is upon your uh, life. And then thank you all, those members who shared with us and prayed for us and prayed for our state convention uh, as we move through this second tenure term uh, as president of the BME State Convention in Michigan. Thank you all for sharing with us. Thank you all for being there and being a great encouragement uh, to myself, Dean Dawson. Thank you all to all of our officers for just being there and sharing uh, with us your prayers and your presence uh, certainly means a lot. Somebody say amen. Watch this, beloved of God. On next week, on next week, our, our tech team is going to put together a great presentation. A great presentation is going to be put together uh, on next week uh, as we celebrate Black History Month. On next week, uh, not only shall we celebrate with our health ministry, but we're going to celebrate uh, our church uh, and the leadership of our church, those individuals, the first pastor and, and individuals who came together uh, to be a blessing uh, in the move of God to organize uh, the New Ebenezer Baptist Church. We're going, we're going to look back over our history for a moment. And I, I bless God for the pastor preachers who came before me. Amen. Who came before me, the Lewises, Silas and Annie Lewis and the Currys and and those families that came together by the move of God and to organize uh, the New Ebenezer Baptist Church. Let me tell you something. Whether you realize it or not, that's history. 
Amen. It's history. It is, it is historical. A lot of times when we pose and look at our history, we talk about other people. But sometimes you got to look at your own history and what the Lord has done in the lives of those individuals. We'll talk about that in a special presentation on next week. And then we're going to do something that's going to talk about Heart Month on next week. And then on the fourth Sunday, we're going to do again our personal presentations uh, as we celebrate Black History Month. Somebody say amen. Amen. And then lastly, I want us to salute our, uh, our own dean, Sister Cecilia Dawson, uh, who received the torchbearers. Come on, give it up. She received the Torchbearers uh, 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 Certificate uh, Award was presented to her. Amen. Yeah. It says, in recognition of your outstanding vision, dedication, and commitment to excellence in Christian education, religious, and community services, the Commonwealth Church, you know, uh, uh, bestow upon her and the Commonwealth Community Development is Pastor, Pastor Tori and Lady Jasmine Bridges pause to honor and recognize you as someone who has taken the work further as a torch bearer in our community. Come on. We salute her. Amen. We salute our own uh, Dean Cecilia Dawson on today. Amen. Certainly solicit your prayers for preaching. Certainly solicit your prayers for preaching on today. You all pray for Sister Marty Hit, uh, Hitter and family. I don't know uh, when I talked to Marty on the other day, uh, her family was going through a time her brother was moving through transition. I don't know if the transition took place or not. All right. And so I'm asking that you all would pray for her, pray for her family uh, as they move through this, uh, through this time uh, on today. Keep them lifted and covered as well. Uh, in your in your prayers. Now you all know I've been dealing with this ever since uh, Watch Night Moving Beyond Limits. You know, in 2022, I have been addressing this theme in various ways uh, to show you and I how we can move beyond the norm and how we can become and be what the Lord desires uh, of us to be. Even this weekend, I want to I want to continue this theme. I want to continue. Of this theme, beloved of God, and focus, you know, as we move, I want to focus on love today. I want to focus, I want to focus on, uh, on love uh, on today. I want to focus on love. Somebody say love. I want to focus on, on love. Watch this here. Recently, I heard this statement which struck my curiosity. I had not heard this statement before. And uh, not ear hustling, but they were just talking loud enough for me to hear it. And they, they made a statement and said something about Super Bowl Sunday and Valentine's Eve. I never heard that before. A comment called Valentine's Eve. This is what they said. That Super Bowl Sunday has no business colliding with Valentine's Eve. All right. And so in the conversation, they were said that Valentine's Eve was a special day and that nothing should have interfered with it because it was a day of preparation to be loved, you know, or to prepare yourself to show some love. You know, this was this was unique because when I heard this conversation going on between a couple of sisters, and so one sister said, I want to be loved. You know, I want somebody to love me uh, on Valentine's Eve. I want somebody to make me feel important and to make me feel special. Somebody else said, yeah, I want the same thing, but I also want to be able to show love uh, and to be able to share love with others because there is so much that is going on in life and that is going on in living. And I beloved to God, I was just listening to the conversation and I start uh, thinking to myself how unique it was to actually hear such a conversation as that. Then I start thanking the Lord for allowing me to hear the conversation with that. I figured the Lord was trying to tell me something because he had laid within my spirit this scripture. But he had not laid within my spirit the direction in which to take the scripture text. After hearing the conversation, I said to the Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing me the opportunity to hear 
what you wanted me to say to Ebenezer on today. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13. Colossians 3 and 13. The scripture in Colossians 3 and 13, when you get it, say amen. So I want us to be able to share it together. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13. Listen at what it says. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, you also do ye. Y'all see it? Watch it again. It's a scripture text. Forbearing one another. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So I looked at the scripture text, heard the conversation. Here's my message for the day. I want to talk about how to get your love back. How to get your love back. How to get your love back. But listen, because I want to place emphasis on loving yourself. I want to place emphasis on loving yourself. How to get your love back? By loving yourself. Y'all should really help me preach. You should help me preach. Turn to your neighbor and say, we can get it back. We just have to love ourselves. Get that other one say, love yourself, love yourself. Love yourself. Let me introduce the text, beloved of God, by certainly sharing some things with you real quickly. Beloved of God, as we celebrate and or prepare to celebrate the day of love, there are some things that I need to remind you of. First of all, flowers don't last forever. They are a, symbol, a symbolic gesture of how you might feel about a person. But eventually, they die. A box of chocolate is not designed to be kept around as a sentiment of value. It's designed to be eaten with the unique expressions of I love you, but I'll be fat after all of this is actually gone. What have happened to you and I is, beloved of God, we have tried to find ways to commercialize our love. And by trying to find ways to commercialize our love, watch this here. What have virtually happened is, is that we do things that we say we're doing for others when really we're doing things for ourselves. To make us in some great fan fashioned way to show our love while at the same time allowing us to pat ourselves on the back. Rings and flowers, jewelries and dinner, all things beloved of God that can become a part of the process but can also become a part of the pain. Y'all help me preach? I like this because in preparation for preaching, let me tell you what I found out. Broken relationships are hard to bear. Broken relationships sometimes has a way of leading to emotional, physical, and even spiritual pain. The thing that gets us in trouble is that when we go through stuff, Nine out of ten times do we discuss what we're going through. Y'all should really let me preach. Do we discuss these things? Beloved of God, we live and we love and we laugh and we celebrate. But when things go south, sometimes we find ways to harbor 
what we're going through. We make comments to ourselves such as, I thought he did, or I thought she did, or I thought it was for real, or I thought it would last. What happens, beloved of God, is rather it is a relationship based upon love or a relationship with your own family, a relationship with your own friends, that when the relationship goes sour and the relationship is broken, if the relationship is not handled, it leads to physical, emotional, and even spiritual pain. I wish I had some help in here. Watch this, beloved of God. If the pain is left unchecked, it can lead to failure to a person loving themselves. When you don't check your pain and really take some time and examine it, what eventually happens is you start disliking you. They don't like me. So I don't like me. You start looking in the mirror as though you are less than somebody else. You start pushing yourself back. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach, but this is a good sermon on today. And you start pushing yourself back from relationships and try to find ways to emotionally deal with what you're going through. Hagen dolls potato chips, chocolate donuts, dinner by yourself. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach up in here. You find yourself trying to comfort you because the pain is bigger than you are. I often remind, I often remind family members and friends in conversations that when you are going through some things, Beloved of God, you must check what's happening in your lives. People who leave their pain unchecked, you walk around carrying emotional pain. And before you know it, your life is spinning out of control. Help me preach up in here. This is what I've been telling folk for years. When you got a chance to fix it, you ought to fix it. And if you can't fix something because it's now too late, fix yourself. Y'all will help me preach. Fix yourself. Never in my, in my life, in my wildest imagination, have I took the opportunity to look and to hear as people's lies spiral out of control. Your family is jeopardized. Your money is jeopardized. Your health is jeopardized. Your relationships are jeopardized. And pure harmony with yourself is jeopardized. Can I preach? You got to watch this thing because when these things are left unchecked, they spiral out of control. Watch this here. You messed up and not doing anything to fix yourself causes you to have problems with your own family. Preach, pastor. Yeah, yeah, nobody can tell you anything. Nobody can encourage you. Nobody can help you because it has spiraled out of control until the point where you start thinking everybody is your enemy and nobody is your friend. When life spirals out of control and you cannot handle what's going on, I sure wish I had some help up in here. Rather than to cling to the Lord who helps you or to cling to some people who can help you, you pick new friends like Jack Daniel. Raymond Bard. Seagram Seven. Christian Brothers. I sure wish I had some help up in here. New, somebody say new friends. You get, you, get, you get some new friends, beloved of God, that you can talk to, but they can't talk back to your new friends that cause you to sorrow or, 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 or to take your pain and sorrow and put it in a cup 
and the new friends that you drink with make you think that life is always against you because you've fallen out of love with yourself. New friends. I seen a sign for one of your friends the other day on the freeway. Her name was Mary Jane. She said, open for business. Come see me. Gave her address and her location. New friends. Because the failure to love yourself has caused you as an individual to go down a drastic road. Watch it. When you talk about love, there are some things that you must first of all put in place. I'm almost done with preaching. There are some things that you must first of all put in place that if, beloved of God, you're going to get your love back, you got to first of all love yourself. Tell your neighbor, here's some steps to loving yourself. Watch what Paul does. Paul reminds us that before we can love someone else, else we got to get ourselves in order how do you do it well first of all the apostle paul says you got to be careful with some things and you must examine some things paul says that you must be forbearing one another in other words the apostle paul says to get you straight you got to first of all learn how to help somebody else come on Bear, bear with one another. Make allowances for other people, individuals who will mess up. The reason you can't get you together is because you ain't learned how to allow other people the opportunity to mess up and to know that even though they have messed up with you, that the God who has forgiven you will also forgive them. You got to give people some room to mess up. Folks don't intentionally mess up. Mess up just becomes a part of life and living. All of us done messed up. Preach, pastor. Oh, all of us. Somebody ought to just wave and say, I know that's right. Oh, oh, all of us have messed up. All of us have made some mistakes in life. All of us have done some things that we desired not to do. All of us have been in some places that we desired not to be in. All of us have found ourselves in some usual places. But the reason you can't get no peace is because you still hold it on to what somebody did to you. Preach, pastor. Holding a conversation with one of my cousins one time, and she was complaining about her, her baby's daddy. And oh, she was just going on and on about how no good he is and all of that stuff, and she was just reading him his rights, and my other cousins, they were just nod, yeah, I know, girl, I've been there, all of that stuff. They were just talking back and forth, back and forth, going on. I shaking my head and nodding, all at the same time. What about cousins say, you don't agree, huh? I said, I ain't going to say I don't agree. I'm just simply saying she giving that brother a hard time. I said, he must have been good at some time. She got four kids by him. That's the best thing he gave me, she said. Yeah, I said, maybe so. But you can't keep holding on to the fact that the brother messed up. I wish I had some help up in here. Matter of fact, the longer you hold on to, the more you have this conversation, the more you talk about it, the more you speak about it, the more you just keep on hammering at it, the more you throw it out of the way. What you are doing is keeping yourself spiritually, emotionally, and physically in a wrecked up state. You will never have no peace of mind. Until you give people the opportunity to know it's okay to people mess up. Give people room to mess up. Why you say that, Pastor? Because God gave you room to mess up. And if God has given you room to mess up, then you ought to give somebody else some room to mess up. 
The other reason you give people room to mess up is because it's in the Bible. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's in the Bible. There is none perfect. No. Not one. Y'all might well help me preach this love weekend right here. Yeah, the Apostle Paul says to you and I, beloved of God, you got to make allowances for other people to mess up. You can't keep holding over people's head what somebody else has done. You got to take the noose from around their neck. Take the handcuffs off of them. Take the chains from off of them. You got to give them some, some room. And understand that life is not filled with perfectness. I'm trying to help you before you eat the chocolate. Before you take the rolls. Before you get the motel key and hang out for a few hours of pleasure. I'm trying to help you out by saying to you according to Paul, beloved of God, you got to give individuals room to mess up. Here's the second thing you got to do. You got to learn how to forgive people who offended you. Help me preach. This is in the scripture. You, you, got, to, you got to learn how to forgive one another. Do you know that when you cannot forgive that you shut the door on love. Help me preach somebody. See, so y'all gonna make me go here. I was trying not to go here today. When, when, when you can't forgive, beloved of God, when, when, when forgiveness cannot take place in your life, you shut the door on your own future. Preach, pastor. You close the door on your own future. You shut your family out when you can't forgive. You shut your homies out when you can't forgive. Watch this here. You, you, you shut the door on future relationships when you can't forgive. Matter of fact, you can't find what you're looking for when you can't Forgive. That's why you jumping from person to person, friendship to friendship. That's why you're jumping. You got a new friend every week. I wish I had some help up in here. That, that's why you're in the emergency room. Preach, Pastor. That, that's, that's why you're having heart palpitations and headaches and, and all of those things. That's, that's why your blood pressure is up. That's why, you, that's why your mind is jacked up. That's, that's, that's why you can't get no sleep at night and can't find no peace. It's because you don't know how to forgive. I'm trying to stay right there. When you can't forgive, you shut the door on future love. Somebody ought to help me preach it here. Matter of fact, you ought to reach over and tell your neighbor, he's sure helping me now. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, you, you, you shut the Y'all gonna make me go there. I declare you out. You, 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 you shut the door on the promises of God. You shut the door on the peace of God. You shut the door on the hope of God and the will of God when you cannot forgive. You shut the door on potential and possibilities. I sure wish I had five. Just five. I just want five of y'all. The rest of y'all, you can do what you want to do. But you shut the door. This is what the Apostle Paul said. Paul says, you forgive each other. But 
telling me about what your mama did. Preach, pastor. I'm so tired of you Negroes with mama drama. Until I don't know what to do. My mama didn't do this when I was growing up. My mama didn't do that when I was growing up. My mama didn't have time for this when I was growing up. My mama this and my mama that and my daddy this and my daddy that. My mama this, my daddy that. My mama, my daddy, my mama, my daddy, my mama, my daddy, my mama, my daddy. Just any old excuse. Rather than to wake your wretched behind up and thank God for the fact that Alicia had a mama and a daddy. Somebody who at least thought long enough about you, even though they might have been poor and could have given you up, but they tried to raise you. Best of their abilities. My sisters and my brothers, our family ain't tight. We don't get along. He thinks she better than me. She think, you know, this... We just got a lot of drama going on. Some people ain't got no brothers and sisters. Some people don't even know who their family is. Or where they come from. And rather than to forgive people. For what people have. Let me, let me break it down like this. Let me put it like this here. You didn't come from the best house. And why are you complaining about where you come from? Don't let the Lord take one of them. Then you come marching up in here, snot, and I'm going to reach. <laughs> they know I was doing my granddaddy. I'm going to reach around. And slapped him. <laughs> Rather than to shut the door on possibility, potentials, and blessings. Listen at what the Lord says. Forgive those who offended you. Watch this. And while you are forgiving those who offended you, this is what happened. You start forgiving yourself. I'm going there. When you start forgiving others, you start forgiving yourself. And the reason some of you all don't want to forgive others, because you done said some stuff about other folk that's going to bring you to the light. But the scripture says, while forgiving others, you can turn around and start forgiving yourself. Lastly, this is what he said. Not only should you forgive yourself, but you ought to know that you are forgiven. I'm done for the day. See, beloved of God, the only way you can love yourself is to know that you are forgiven. And watch this here. When you know that you are forgiven, it allows you to regroup. It lets you take the hatred off of yourself. It allows you to remove the hatred out of your spirit. Beloved of God, when you know that you have been forgiven, the chains that were binding you together have now been broken. The bitterness that was in your life has now been taken away. When you forgive others, I know without a doubt that you have been forgiven yourself. You can release yourself from the offenses that you've done to yourself. You can channel new energy into what I call self-love. Somebody say self-love. Self-love. The confidence, beloved of God, to accept who you are. To appreciate who you are. 
to speak affirmation, I'm through, over yourself. To be able to say to yourself, I'm a child of the king. I've been anointed and released. I've been blessed and saved. You can speak over yourself. I've been healed of my wrongs. I've been released of my pain. You can speak over yourself. God has taken away that which is holding me back. And you can open up the door and let the love come in. Let it in. Let it in. Let it in. If you don't think nobody loves you, fall in love, first of all, with the lover. Yes! Jesus loves me. Yes! Jesus loves me. Yes! Jesus loves me. The evident of it was taking place on a hill called Calvary where he shed his blood that I might have a right to the tree of life where he died for my sins and took the cleansing power of his blood and washed me anew washed me afresh died that I might live buried in a bar or two got up Sunday morning all power in his hand let me help you now. Get your love back. I said, let me help you get your love back. Lift up your hands. Lift them up, both of them. Lift them up. Throw back your head. Look up toward glory. This is what I want you to tell the Lord. Lord, do for me like you did, David. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew unto me the right spirit oh God you gotta want it you gotta want it you gotta want it here is the last thing and I'm done don't carry around dead weight unless you're trying to help them the scripture and when dead weight don't want to be helped, this scripture, shake the dust off your feet and move on. See, y'all weren't going to get that far. When dead weight don't want to be helped, quit trying to help them. Quit dragging something around that's going to keep dragging you down. Oh, y'all so quiet. Shake the dust. Y'all remember that? Anybody ever been to the beach? I said anybody ever been to the beach? You ever notice when you leave the beach and once you get to that solid ground, you to take off your shoes, clap them together, get that sand off of them, then you kind of feet, get the sand off of it, put your shoes on, go on about your business. You ain't taking the sand home, Wimbush. You leaving it at the beach rather than to keep hanging around that that will drain you that which will pull you down shake the dust off your feet I'm through cause some of y'all then got mad with me cause you were preparing to celebrate Love. You can't appreciate love until you love until you love yourself. 
The farmer milks the cow on a daily basis. The cow never argues. It just eats and produces. Because the cow understands that what it takes in is designed to be a blessing for somebody else. That's what the word does. We take the word in. And it's not designed to keep it for yourself. It's designed to be a blessing to somebody else. Well, the door is open. The invitation. The invitation to Christian discipleship is extended. You are here. Strong possibility. That you may not have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. Strong possibility you may have strayed away from the fold. Life may have pulled you away from the Lord. Some way, somehow. But the Lord keeps saying, the day that you hear my voice, hard not your heart. In other words, what he's saying, when you hear my voice, the Lord is saying, I'm making myself available unto you in the sanctuary, watching us virtually or listening to us. The invitation is yours. You can accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of his life. Come on, brothers, take your place where you're supposed to be at. Come on. This invitation is yours. This invitation is yours. Come on. This invitation is yours. Come on and accept him. Accept him now as the Lord and Savior of your life. This is your invite. This is your invitation. The Lord says, come ye, blessed of my Father. This invitation is yours. Oh, this invitation is yours. Free. Come on, it's your invitation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Forever. Yes, Lord. Free. Go on, take your seats. Healing. Inside. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Beloved of God, get your love back. Turn your neighbor. Say, get your love back. Get your love. Get your, get your love back. Get your love back. When you get your love in order, you can just shine. Somebody says shine. Oh, you can just shine all day, all day long. People look at you and know when you got it together. Yeah, they look at you. They can look at you and tell when you got it together. You ain't got to announce it. Mm -mm, when you got it together, people look at you, and they can tell that whatever was there, you released it, you let it go, you gotten done with it, and now you enjoy the blessings of the Lord in your life. Put them hands together one more time. Praise and bless him for what he has done. Let's prepare ourselves for giving. Let's prepare ourselves for giving on oh, today. We prepare ourselves for giving. If you have not given on your way in, you need some assistance from our ushers. Hold your hand up. They'll give you an envelope. Those who need an envelope, hold your hand up. Those who are in need of an envelope, hold your hand up. The ushers will assist you real quickly. They will assist you real quickly. How good the Lord is. They will assist you real quickly. Hold your hand up high so they can see you. Those who need an envelope, amen. How good the Lord is.
How good he is. How good he is. How good he is. All right, let's prepare ourselves for giving. Those who are at home, come on to stand. Those who are at home, those in the sanctuary are standing as well. Those who are in the sanctuary are standing as well. Those who are at home, you get yourself together <clears throat> in preparation for giving. You're preparing to give. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for the opportunity to give. Bless now the gifts and the givers that it be used for the purpose in which it is received. You get the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The saints say amen. And bless God. You can have your seats. You need the ushers to assist you. Hold your envelopes up. They're coming to you. Hold your envelopes up and the ushers will assist you. Hold your hand up. Hold it up. The ushers will assist you. Oh, yeah. Hold it up. They will assist you. Bless your giving. 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 Y'all need the ushers up there? Y'all good? All right. Bless your giving. Bless your giving. Bless your giving. Bless your giving. What up, Jacob? You all right? All right. Bless your giving on today. Bless your giving. Bless your giving. Bless your giving. Now, after such a profound message, you just doing well, and you blessing the Lord for it, and you just think you need this box of chocolate. <laughs> you say, Pastor, I need that box of chocolate. You just think you need this box of chocolate. Oh, today you just think you need it. Just come on. Come on and get it if you think. You sit next to a man who ought to be able to buy you a box of chocolate. Take that box back. <laughs> she, she was just hungry, huh? <laughs> Listen, the Lord is so good, gracious, and kind, and we praise and bless him for it on today. Let me take a moment. If you're visiting with us, just stand up. Anybody that's visiting with us, just stand up. We want to make you feel welcome on today. You ain't got to say nothing, but just stand up. If you're visiting with us, you don't mind. If not, come on, put your hands together. There you go. Come on, put your hands together. Welcome all of our visitors. Thank you for being here with us all today. We're honored and blessed to have you with us. Come on back uh, and share with us anytime. Amen. We bless, we bless the Lord for you. We bless the Lord for you all today. Well, come on and stand. Come on and stand. Uh, I don't know if anybody from Pastor Support is coming. Supposed to give us some direction. Anybody said anything to us? We don't know which way we're going, what we're doing. Somebody should come and tell us something, or they'll come and tell you something uh, once we're actually done uh, on today. All right? Let's pray. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church Oh, yeah, let the church, amen, the whole church, God has spoken. Now may the love of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest rule abide with us. Henceforth, now and forevermore. Every heart says, Amen. 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 Our young people, you are.